that we pulled through. I was blessed even listening to them again. And uh, I want you to cultivate the habit of listening to tapes and sermons. Amen. It will cause you to grow. If you really desire to grow, add that to your life and uh, soak sermons. Amen. All right. If you are watching us online, if you've been following our ministry, quite a number of people follow us. Do you know that? Quite a number of people follow us. Sometimes I get amazed. <laughs> um, I was talking to a friend in the UK uh, about a month ago. And he told me that he's been watching us a month. He's been following our ministry every day. I said, hey, really? Uh, uh, so, mm, happy anniversary to all of us. All those who watch us online, thank you for watching us again. If you watch later, happy anniversary to all of us. Great. All right, let's pray. Father, speak to us again like you always do. And may we never be the same. Cause the power of your word to bring transformation in our minds and our lives for good. May we be doers of this word and not only listeners and hearers. In the name of Jesus, help me to deliver it as you have determined. And may we all together be transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So yesterday we, we delve into exchange and uh, we expounded what it means. And uh, uh, run through a couple of scriptures from the Old to the New Testament to establish what this exchange really means. And we, we learned a lot. We will go straight into what the Lord has for us today. And uh, if you are a member of this church, you know it already. But we will keep learning and we will keep repeating and reminding ourselves. In Philippians chapter 3, uh, Paul said that for me to write the same things to you is not tedious to me at all. It's not difficult for me at all, but it is for us safety. There's security and safety in repetition. Hallelujah. And so you look at Paul's letters and all his letters were saying the same thing. It's the reason why uh, Matthew wrote, but God permitted Mark to also write. And they were writing the same thing. The Bible is a huge book of repetition. What Isaiah and Ezekiel and all those people said in the Old Testament, what the prophets said in the New Testament, they were quoting them back, back, back because we have to hear and hear again. The Lord speaks once, but we must listen or hear how many times? More than twice. Hallelujah. And so we repeat these things every year to remind ourselves and even the people that join us in the course of the year that this is who we are, this is what we believe, and this is the reason we do the things we do. Tonight, I want to speak to us about living the exchanged life. In Galatians chapter 2, Two, the verse number 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We signed off last night by establishing that when you look at this text, the Christian life is not necessarily a changed life. Whilst we live a changed life, it starts with an exchange. So it is an exchange life, beloved. Listen to what I'm about to see carefully. The Christian life is not only difficult to be lived. It is impossible to live the Christian life. The only way to successfully live it is to permit Christ to live it through you. When God says stuff like when somebody slap you, turn the order for him. Eh? Really, when your enemy is hungry, give them food and add drink. Pray for those who persecute you and despisely use you. These things, let's be honest with ourselves, amongst pray without ceasing. Eh? Rejoice always. Eh? Ah, you don't know that how, how many a year. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks always. 
feed your enemy. These things are not only difficult, they are impossible. That is why the exchange is important. So the way we live it is allowing him, and he hasn't told you to do it. He said, permit me to do it with you and through you. Hallelujah. And so we are going to uh, learn some lessons from the Bible. It's scattered all over the place. We'll not be able to exhaust all, but as, as much as time will permit me, I want to share some lessons with you uh, concerning what we should do with this whole exchange and who we have become. Uh, at the core of everything, he is taking our old nature and giving us a new nature, planted us in a new kingdom, and expect us to live in a new way. And how do we have to live this life that I say is not just a changed life, it is an exchange life that produces the change. You, if your focus is the change, you won't change. You it will look like you are changing, but you will just change for a moment. But when you focus on the exchange, the exchange will draw into your life a permanent transformation or change. Hallelujah. Great. So how do we live this exchange life? Number one, reckon yourself dead to sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 10 to 11. For the death that he died, that we learned yesterday, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Talking about Jesus, our prototokos. He died once, but he lives unto God. He died once, and we also died once. We are crucified with him. After that, we live unto God. How are we going to live unto God? He went on and said in the verse 11, Likewise, just as Christ died, and he died once for all and lives unto God, the verse 11 says that likewise, those of us who also died and rose with him, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we ought to reckon. The word reckon there means Legizomai, legizomai, write it down. L O G I Z O M A M A I. L O G I Z O M A I. Legizomai. It means to reckon. It is the, the, the Greek word that was translated reckon. What it means is take inventory, to take inventory or to estimate, to number or to reason. Or to take an assessment of a condition that already exists. So, we, we have been placed in a condition. So there has been an exchange. And Paul is advising us that we have received his life. He died to give us a new life. For us to be alive unto God. For us to live a life unto God. But alive to God in Christ. We are in Christ, and God is not just looking for people who are just dead. He's looking for people who have died and have risen with Christ and living a new life. So we are dead men, but we are alive in Christ. That is ho the whole essence of being born again. We have died and we have been born again. But we will not live this life unto God until we reckon. And the reckon there is important. It means to estimate, to reason, to think about it. It means to take stock. It means to take inventory of a condition that already exists. Something has happened, but for us to get the best out of it, it means we must be mindful of it. Hallelujah. We must be conscious of it. It is not something that must be passive with us. You, we live in a world, we live in the flesh, in a very wicked world that has a lot of wickedness and concerns and the, the cares of this world. And predominantly our flesh is so close to us and we have five senses always needing our attention and many, many, many social media. We don't know what to come after TikTok. Many, many, many things. We were struggling with Facebook and IG, and they say we want we have more time. They added TikTok. 
And we don't know what this, what app they are building again that they will release in two years that we will get. <laughs> <laughs> but we, as as new creation, as 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 a, as as a new creation, as as somebody that has been born again, we are advised or we admonish you: reckon yourself, reckon every day, remind yourself, reason, number. Take account, do an assessment. There is a new condition that exists. Make it be in your mind always. Hallelujah. There is no, you see, there is no natural death that automatically occasions a physical resurrection. So the fact that you are dead to Christ and you have you are now alive to God does not mean that automatically the life that is in the new life, the new eternal life will find expression in your life. It is not automatic. You have to be conscious of it. You have to think about it. You have to daily take inventory of it. Hallelujah. Do you understand? So, for us to be alive unto God, you know, when we read Ephesians chapter 2, we who were once dead have been made alive. So, the two sides of the coin that we studied last, like yesterday, when you are conscious of both sides of the coin, then you must be conscious of your new nature and the new condition you have inherited from the Lord. Hallelujah. We were dead. You, he has made a, who were once dead. We were dead, but he has been made alive. We were dead in trespasses, but we have been made alive. But how can we stay alive? Staying alive in this new life demands a reckoning an estimation, an inventory taking, and it must be constant. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you lose fact or you lose sight of who you are. Hallelujah. So you must reckon yourself dead to sin and alive unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, you must permit Jesus to live through you by faith. Write it down. Permit Christ to live through you by faith. After salvation, our will is very, very much over them, and we have to learn to submit our will to the Lord. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. The life I live is no longer, but Christ lives in me. So Christ is living the life through me, but you must permit him. We have the power to permit him or to disallow him. For the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God. Now, Paul did not just say that he lives, he, he, he is living in the faith. He said he lives by the faith of the Son of God. It is the faith of. So you see, the righteousness of faith, the righteousness that we have become, the other side of the coin, that we received, that he took on it and gave us, we, we, we cashed in or we took hold of it by faith. And that faith was not our faith. That faith was impacted by the gospel. The gospel has within faith. The gospel in fact faith, in fact, uh, impact faith. In fact, the, the, the Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing. And that faith God never takes back. It stays with us and we ought to live the Christian life by that faith. And that faith is not our faith. It is God's kind of faith. Hallelujah. There is human faith that sometimes can be affected and influenced by our senses. But this God kind of faith is not influenced or should not be affected by our five senses. Hallelujah. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight, by seeing, by what we see, by what we smell, by what we feel, and by what we hear. Hallelujah. We walk the sight there is talking or it is there representing. If the Bible was written to them, I'm sure they would have added all the four other senses. But the sight there is representing the five senses, that in this new life we have received, having become the righteousness of God, 
we live by faith. The faith that brought us the, the righteousness, that faith becomes the new currency with which we live. And the only thing that will be, that will be challenging or fighting against it or the, or the other options is looking around or our senses. And we ought to live by faith. And it is not your faith, but the faith of the Son of God. Paul said that the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It is not human faith. Hallelujah. What is this kind of faith? Romans chapter 4 verse 17 will throw some light upon it. That is a God kind of faith. Uh, Romans chapter 4 verse 17. The faith that does not look at the outside. The faith that does not consider what we feel, what we sense, what we, what we can touch and what meets the eye. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed, God, comma, who gives life to the dead. God gave us life. He gives life to the dead. And how, how, how does God live? This is the nature of God. We have received a nature. And you must know how to live with that nature. Who calls those, thi those things which do not exist as though they did? So the way we live this new life is by not waiting to see the thing before. We get another eye and uh, the power of imagination. We have received a new man. We have become a new man and the new man has an eye such that what this eye cannot see, we have a third eye inside at the eye of faith that can see things that does not exist. And we can call them forth like God. Let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. And there was light. That is the kind of life that we ought to live. And that is how we ought to live. We live by the faith of the Son of God. And we should not be moved by what we see, by what we feel, and by anything that meets the eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand? It's a new nature in a new kingdom with a whole new way of living. And here, we call things that do not exist as though they do. And anything, you see, you see, faith, you see, what, what touch faith and all of these other five senses can do? Faith can see beyond them. They are limited. If it is, if it is seeing, faith can see beyond the eyes. If it is feeling, your faith can feel beyond. You can feel it, and you can. You are not even feeling it in your body. Faith is so powerful, and the faith that made us righteous is still with us. There's nobody who is faithless, who is righteous. There's nobody who is faithless, who is a child of God or a believer. That faith is the new way of living. We live by faith and not by sight. And if you walk in this faith, you will permit, you will permit God. Paul said that I live by the faith. Go back to Roma, uh, Galatians chapter 2. He says that by Christ and the life I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Christ is living through me. Hallelujah. For I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. That is you believing that there is a Christ in you and he can empower you to do everything that he has said that you should do and you can do. And the new man that you have become is the one that Paul wrote to and said that I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. How will you do it? You will do it not by sight, not by might, not by feeling, but by faith. Hallelujah. Listen, the things that your money cannot buy, faith can give it to you. Listen, the things that you cannot buy, the medicine that you cannot buy to heal you, faith can bring the healing. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, anything, anything that, that, that brings limitation into our lives, he has given us this faith to make us righteous, not only to believe that we are righteous, but also to live by that faith. Hallelujah. And that is how we live. Number three, don't frustrate graves. Don't for the next verse. Stay there. The next verse. Don't frustrate graves. You see, this this exchange made graves available for us. This exchange ushered in the dispensation of the grace of God. The dispensation where God deals with us not according to what we have and our own holiness, but according to the obedience of his son. And the next verse, he says that, if you read from the top, he said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, let not, not I, but Christ live in me. But life and I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Then he came, he came down and said that, because of this, I don't frustrate grace. I don't frustrate grace. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. What does this mean? What does it mean to frustrate grace? Uh, the exchange made grace available. Hallelujah. And we can do all things. You see, grace, faith, the faith that made you righteous, gave you us grace. When we read Romans chapter, chapter 5, Romans 5, 2, we can start from the verse 1. So, this whole exchange that has made the righteousness of God by faith, that faith opened up unto you all of the riches of his glory, which is his grace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Justified by what faith? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See the verse 2. See the verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into what? Into what? Into what? This grace. So the faith. You see, when you when a man who walks by faith, grace is is grace just follows you. The faith, what the other you are using to fetch grace. You are using the faith to just fetch grace. So if you are walking by faith, you should not frustrate grace. That is the next thing. And what does it mean to frustrate grace? Before you look at frustrating grace, why was grace given? Why did Jesus come to die? Why did Jesus come to die? First John 3, 8. First John 3, 8. He who, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came to die to destroy the works of the devil. And he came to die to give us grace. So grace in our lives works against the, 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 the works of the devil. Do you understand? He died to release grace. He died to make us, he died to make us righteous. So he died to give us grace to overcome the works of the devil. And secondly, to make his grace abundant in our lives. John 10, 10. I came to give you life and to give you what? More abundantly. Hallelujah. So the purpose of God's grace in our lives is to set us free from the devices of the enemy and to grant us abundant life. That is all. The purpose of the exchange, the purpose of the exchange is to Deliver us or set us free from the devices or the, or the works of the enemy. And then to usher us into the abundant life. So it is twofold. One side of the coin, 
deliverance from sin, taking away the sin nature, that is delivering you from Satan and his power. But it doesn't end there. And then to usher you what? Into what? Abundant life. You can see the action right here. The thieves, sin, makes, gives Satan access to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. But he came to take that. But if you believe that he has come to take that, and Satan has no power to steal, kill, and destroy from you, then you must also believe that you have abundant life. Hallelujah. Now, you can frustrate grace. Now, if you're frustrating grace, it means that you are alive unto God. Do you understand? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But if you frustrate grace, then you are cutting yourself short from this abundant life and you are giving Satan access to your life. And what does it mean to frustrate grace? To frustrate means to prevent from accomplishing a purpose or a desire or like to twat. Eh? You are twatting. Eh? That, that is an is a English word, twat. Yeah. This thought, uh -huh. Oh, hammer. Do you understand? So, to frustrate me is to prevent something. So, or say, I do not, it means grace can be frustrated. Or say, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Take me back to, Galat uh, to Galatians. I don't frustrate grace. You can frustrate grace. It makes grace look like a person, right? Some people say grace is a person. How can you frustrate a pillar? How can you frustrate a thing? How can you frustrate a sermon? How can you frustrate something that cannot, that, that does not have emotions and cannot speak and somebody else a person? You cannot frustrate uh, a microphone. So that's why people say grace. Whether grace is a person or not, you know, grace, grace is grace. Amen. I don't frustrate grace. How? Semicolon. For if righteousness came by the Lord, then Christ died in vain. Trying to frustrate grace is trying to obtain your own right standing based on your own holiness instead of receiving it by grace through faith. Frustrating grace is very simple. When God has said that you have it, but you want to do something to get it, and you are tying your getting it to what you are doing, that is, so he said that if righteousness came by keeping the law, then Christ died in vain. So don't make his death in vain. No making his death in vain is receiving grace. How? By accepting that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not by what you do or do not do, but by what he did. When you do that, you are amplifying grace. You are giving grace access to flow in your life then you are using your faith to believe that you are righteous. And when you use your faith to believe that you are righteous, you have access to grace. That is why we confess every day that we are righteous. If you use your faith to believe that you are righteous, it is easy to use your faith to believe that you have a house. Because it's more, it was more difficult for him to die to give you forgiveness to make you righteous than it is for him to give you anything physically. How can you, a bad person like you, say that you are righteous and you still believe that today you are righteous? And you cannot, how can you believe that you are righteous and cannot believe that you prosper? Then either you don't know what righteousness is or what it means to be righteous or what it causes him to make you righteous. You cannot, you cannot have faith to, to, to believe that you are righteous and say you don't have faith to travel. Because which one is easier? One day, Jesus came and met somebody. The person was sick. And the person was paralyzed. And what did Jesus do? He said that your sins are forgiven. And the people said, hey, hey, this man, he's blaspheming. He's not God. It's only God who can forgive sin. And Jesus asked him a question. He said, which one is easier? To say that your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? That's a very, very technical question. Very, very technical. Without the remission of sins, there cannot be forgiveness of sins. So, <laughs> it is, it means I am God. What it means or what it caused me to forgive his sin 
it's more difficult for the healing. He can drink ABC cold day and be healed. But this one, somebody must die. You don't need blood. You see? And the healing is tied to the, the forgiveness of sins. So that when he receives the forgiveness of sins, the healing will follow. So it is, it is easier for us, it is, it is easier for us to believe God for thing, material blessings than it is for us to believe that we are righteous. Because that righteousness is, was a bloody matter that purchased the righteousness. If you are bold enough to say that you are righteous, you must be bold enough to say that I am rich. I'm the salt of the earth. I carry flavor. I season the earth. I'm a city set on a hill. I cannot be hidden. And I am prosperous. I am rich. Hallelujah. So, in a fish, sorry, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Jesus. Not faith in Jesus. It is through the faith of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me King James. Through faith in Jesus. And your faith of Jesus. Hallelujah. And yet the faith of Jesus. It is the faith of, it's not just faith in Jesus, of course. It is the faith, you see, you cannot use your faith to believe in Jesus. It is his faith that used to believe in him. So it is faith in him, it is not wrong. But you must understand whose faith you are using. Hallelujah. It's not having my own righteousness. Don't try to get things from God. How do you use the exchange life? Conscious of your new righteous, your new nature. You must know that you have access to God. And if you need something from God, just ask him. Go by the true and only living way. Through Jesus and what he has done only. Live holy. Live righteous. Bear the fruit of righteousness. Serve him. Do everything. Be obedient. But when you are coming to him, don't come on the ticket of what you have done. Frustrating grace is wanting right standing with God or blessings from God based on your own holiness. Hallelujah. King James will say, set aside. I do not set aside the grace of God. New King James. New King James. Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. And read other modern translations, you'll get it clearer. I do not frustrate King James. I do not set aside. You don't set it aside. Don't set it aside. Hallelujah. Frustrating it is setting it aside and going with your, you know, Isaiah said something or say, our righteousness is like what? It's like what? People who have confidence in how they live, that verse irritate them. As good as this preaching is, as good as it is, as good as this work is, we can't even go. When did when did Paul start in Paul? We don't even know where we learned it from. Nobody practiced it in the New Testament. Where they go to God, ask for anything, and they're holding something like God is a is a as good as this thing is, it is only good for this purpose, teaching and learning. But when I carry it before God to get healing, it is what well, is what? Filthy rag. Hey, say hey. Hey. If preaching gospel is filthy rag, now nah, I saw them up. Pra, pra. You understand? So we know that we should not look for our own righteousness. Hallelujah. Great. Number four. So don't frustrate grace. Number four. Speak 
and master positive confession. Speak and master positive confession. Romans chapter 10, verse 5 to 6. For Moses writes of the righteousness which is of the law. The exchange has given us a righteousness which is of faith. But before then, we were under a certain righteousness. The first kind of righteousness was righteousness which came through the law and by what we did. Hallelujah. The man who does these things shall live by them. Verse 6. But say but. They say a big you them but. The righteousness of faith speaks. I told you that the devil doesn't mind what you know and what you believe as long as your mouth is shut. That's why Psalm 107 verse 2 says that, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so that you have been redeemed. You are redeemed and nobody knows. Sometimes you also have to remind yourself. So the first person that listens when you speak is you. <laughs> let the righteous of faith speaks. Speaks in this way. Speak. The righteous of God, we do, yes. But we speak first because we have heard first. And the speaking always brings the word into perspective. And brings Christ and what he has done into perspective before we do. Hallelujah. What do you know? Who are you? Have you said it? Where are you going? Have you said it? Who are you? I am rich. Don't just make it a song. Write it. Write it everywhere and be declaring it. Say it as many times as because sometimes we forget. We forget. Hallelujah. Psalm 107 verse 2. Let the redeemed, let the saved, let the one that has been a beneficiary of the exchange, let the righteous man say so. Say so that you have been redeemed from the wickedness of the devil. Say it. I am free. No weapon from against me shall prosper. Say it. As long as it's in your head. Listen, the gospel starts with go. It's not only applicable to evangelism. The thing must go from your mouth into your ears. It must go from your mouth. The words must leave your head. The words must leave the Bible. They must leave your notebook. And they must reach your ears. And they must read the ears of the devil. So let the redeemed not keep his mouth shut. For Jesus Christ, who died to redeem you, is the high priest of our confession. Because we started this journey talking. We started by saying what we have believed. And, and Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says that just as, just as you believed, continue. Just as you receive, continue to walk in him that way. Hallelujah. Living the, the exchange life cannot be lived with, with, with a shut mouth. As you therefore receive Christ, so walk in him. How did you receive Christ? By believing. What do you do after believing? When you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, you know that when you believed, you what? You confessed with your mouth. Confession. You must be a master of positive confession. I cannot be sick. Even when you are sick, I cannot be sick. When they say, when they say, when they say, when they say casting down, you say that there's a lifting up. The first time we saw God in the Bible, he was talking. And he named his son the word. Hallelujah. After believing and you confess with your mouth unto salvation, and he said, as you received him, so walk him. So how do you walk? Believing and saying. But you have believed so many things. That you haven't said. That you have not confessed. The believer is a poet. Being a doer. In, in James chapter 1. The word doer there is a poetess. Your brother Mo. That's how Paul said that if I'm crazy, I'm crazy for the Lord. Not by just what he did. You have to master speaking. Hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who has been redeemed from the hand of the enemy? How many of you have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy? You have been redeemed from his nature. Say it. Amen. And then after that, we live for Jesus. He died for you, so live for him. Write it down. Is it number six or number five? Live for Jesus. He died for you. Right? Live for Jesus. He died for you. Second Corinthians chapter 5, the verse number 14 to 15. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but live what? But for him who died for them and rose again. We no longer live unto ourselves. We no longer live unto ourselves. So how do we live unto him? Don't live unto yourself. We do not own ourselves. We don't own ourselves. We say yes to his will. Jesus taught us. And he said, not as I will, but as you will. My body is yours. You have bought me. You have changed my nature. I am yours. So I want to go here. But if you say we should go here, I don't have an excuse. I don't have an excuse. You want my Wednesdays, you have it. You want my money, take it. Lord, why are you being asked? You should have taken it. But he respects your will. He wants to know whether you give it to him. That those, he died for us so that we will live for him. When the esteem excites you, that he took shame to give you glory. He became sin to make you righteous. He became poor to make you rich. He became sick to, make, to bring you healing. Beloved, all of them put together is that he gave his life for you so that you will give your life for him by what? Dying. Hallelujah. So how do we live for him? Number, number six. Take up your cross and die to the flesh. Then he said to the disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Beloved, this life you have received is the life of God. Righteousness <laughs> is the nature of God. It's a nature. Listen, you died and rose, and the new life you have is his life. Beloved, how that life finds expression, beloved, listen, how that life finds expression is at the rate to which this flesh dies. Except a corn of grain falls to the ground and dies. Before Jesus died, he said that. But when, it, when, it, when, it, when it's there, listen, it's just like the gospel. It starts with go. It's so powerful. The life of God is in you. In that life is everything that you need. Philemon 6. By the acknowledging of the, that the communication of your faith will become effective. But acknowledging of every good thing is in you. It is in you. But it will bless your world. It will bless your environment. It will bless your flesh, your family, your friends. At the degree that this flesh dies. If Jesus, had to, I told the church workers we said, if Jesus had to die for the life of God in him to come, the life of the thing is in the, in the, is in the blood. But the blood must be shed before the life will come out. The principle doesn't change from Leviticus to the cross to today, 2024. For the eternal life of God in us to find expression, the supernatural life the resurrected life, the extinct life, that if he who dwells in us, if, 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 Romans chapter 8, the verse number 11, if the spirit of him who dwells, who raised Jesus from the dead indwells us, he will quicken the mortal body. You see, the, it is, he is the spirit giving life 
And until the body gives way, until your flesh gives way, listen, everything is boxed up inside. If you are the rise of God and you like sleeping and you are lazy and you are oversensitive, you love your life. The quickening, the shaking of the mortal body is what we don't want. It is not only for healing and revival, but it is a principle. So that when we come back to Matthew chapter 16, the verse number 25, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses that life for my sake will find it. Losing the life. Denying yourself. Denying the flesh. And Paul taught us how to live the exchange life. First Corinthians chapter 15, the verse number 31. I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. I die. He died for you to live. To live the resurrected life. To live the exchange life. To live in, in a new and a living way. I die. Paul was saying that I face, because of the hope of resurrection, I face death all the time. Paul is living almost a reckless life and God is saving him every now and then. He spoke about earlier, he has spoken about how he has faced shipwreck several times in perils on the sea, in the, on the, in the air, and all of that. So I died. That death is there. But you see, you see, this die daily, we're already dead to sin. It's not die to sin. We die, we die to sin once because Jesus' death to sin was our death to sin. Do you have a new life? This death daily is what he wrote again in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26 to 27. Therefore, run. Young men, run. We are in a race. We are running. Stop walking. The acting life, you cannot use it to walk. There are days for walking and there's a season for walking. But where we are going, then the way you are walking, you may never get there. By the time you are 65, now won't do one more. Paul said, therefore I run us, not with uncertainty. We must live intentionally. We must live with purpose. We must reckon. We must reckon. We must let this of mind. We must be conscious of who we are. We must be conscious of what we have. We must be conscious of what we can do with his grace and his strength. Intentional life. Living deliberately. A time you wake up. A time you sleep. Conscious. Not with uncertainty. We are certain that he died. We are certain that he rose. We are certain that he, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are certain when we die we will go to heaven. We must be certain about tomorrow. We serve a certain God. We do not serve an unknown God. We know him. He knows us. While there are a lot of uncertainty in this life, we must live a certain life. Not with uncertainty. Even in this world, there's disqualification. You watch the, the recent Olympics, right? Yeah, they learn how to warm out. The rules are too many. And there are rules of engagement in the resurrected life, in the exchange life. We can only be excited about the exchange. It comes with responsibilities. The privileges cannot excite us and, and make us lose sight that we have a life to live. That's a fight. It's a fight because Satan, I told the church workers quite recently. Satan, he lost the battle on you going to hell. You think he has left you? There are crowns. There are glories. There are things. He, 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 he is still, the, 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 we are still in a fight because this flesh is not born again. Huh? But you, you know that it's not born again. Eh? You have to burn it again. Beat it. Beat it. Bring it under subjection. Die to it. Don't listen to it too much. The life of faith. There must be faith in everything. You must have faith projects. Faith project. And some of them must be reckless. Some of them moderate. And some of them, aha. Uh -huh. 
you don't always you don't close your shop always and go to church. But once in a while, send your me You don't you don't don't use your life. You, you don't know how to use your life to take a car and come to church and trust if God ah now right or the automana exercise your faith. Once in a while, he says, you run to a church, they don't take, they don't say empty your you. So you have never emptied your destiny. You have never, you've not come to church. God knows that. Ah, empty ah. God cares. He knows my God. Does God knows my account? Let me check whether he really knows. Let me check whether he knows. Drop everything inside and let's see. And finish and linger around and let's see. It's if a miracle happens. You walk home, the next time drop, 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 drop. But you see, yourself, eh, or one of or bills, or comfort, any the cares of this world is too present to you. And God is not first in your life, although He put you first. The extinct life is a life where God is first on every side. What is it? Let me let me give this school fees. Let me give these school fees. We won't stand here and, and say that bring every money in your account. But will you, will you, can you, if you can, once in a while, try it and see. Don't come and take your first food in January. But can, will you voluntarily give your first food to see that you, you give, you give, you, you take your first food, your January salary, and you send it to your pastor, and then you are there. Can you do that? Can you do that? Say no. Say God help me. The, a, life, a life of faith. And you see you must have faith project. You must have faith project. And the flesh is that you see we are in a fight. Beloved we are in a fight and you must acknowledge the first person you are fighting with. Forget those witches and wizards. Those principalities and powers. They have been undone. Yesterday Isaiah told us that he, he finished what? He finished sin. And the one behind sin, he finished sin. The first person who is doing you is you. Listen, if he has done, if they did you, they did you with you. Your flesh and your concern to the flesh and your needs gave him access. Once in a while, deny your body. That's why fasting is important. The Eastern life is a fasted life. You are waiting for the next time, Pastor. I'll say we are fasting. It you are all day, and I all day. Paul said in the next the verse twenty-seven, but I keep under my I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection. You bring it to subjection. Say come in from man from man for yam kakra. Man from man for yam kakra. Man from man for yam kakra. Kill the body. You see, there's glory on the inside. There's glory. There's honor. The, that thing is inside, though. But you see, you see, the gary is there, oh. But you see, there's water inside him. You have to carry some blood and put it on the Agbelima. It is useless. It is useless until the water leaves it. Nothing grows and prospers in the comfort zone. Jesus gave birth to us in the tomb. For more than one year, one year, six months, he said he wants for 5.30 to 6. He's still struggling. And he's the one who gives you sleep. There's a fight, though. There's a fight. And it is not, it is not, it is not Satan and, and you. It is your body and you. The real you is the man that was born again. The righteousness of God is a nature. That is the real deal. But there's a flesh that you have to bring into subjection. And Paul said, you see, in 1 Timothy 6 12, fight a good fight of faith. It's a good fight. We are in a fight. The fight is not about fighting, no. He fought them and defeated them. But the fight now, Paul one day, one day said, I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. What fight? Fight of flesh. One day we were having devotion and I, I went to, 
I went to somebody's room and I went there, the phone was on. And I went there. <laughs> Thank God for the mute button. We have all fought and tortured the flesh before. When we wanted to go and write exams, you put your you put something in your eye, you put the leg in water. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. But here, there's gold on the inside. Everything you need is on the inside. But the flesh is in your way. But reckon yourself dead to sin. And of course, to the flesh. For sin is done with and in the flesh. All disobedience is win and in the flesh. But we are not in the flesh. We are in the spirit. Number seven. How do we live for him? By serving the church and the brotherhood. First John 3.16 For by this we know love. Because he laid down his life for us to make us righteous. We also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We have to serve the church. We have to serve the brethren. The way we perceive God's love is looking at, the, at, at, at his actions. At the actions of Jesus. And the way people perceive the love of God today is by looking at our actions and the sacrifices we do. Write them down. The way we perceive the love of God, we, the church, the way we perceive the love of God is looking at the actions of Jesus and his sacrifice. For the people in the world, the way they will also perceive the love of God is by perceiving our actions and our sacrifices for ourselves and for them. He died for us. Exchange, exchange, exchange. He laid down his life for us. Jesus is in my place. I am in his place. I have his life. We also ought to. We must. What that translation? We must. It's a command. It's not a discussion. It's an instruction that we must obey, beloved. This is living the exchange life. It's a sight. The sermon of divine action is a sight. Last night was a sight where we see the vicarious dead and the substitutionary dead. And he took this, he gave you this, he took that, he gave you that. To do what? To do what? To whom much is given, much is expected. It comes with responsibilities. But the good news is there is always grace available to do this. There is always grace and his strength is available to do this. Hallelujah. First John Sorry, John 13, 14. And if and I then, your teacher, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. Listen, the action life is a, is a servant life. Here, he was not saying practically we should go and wash people. You haven't washed your feet. When people move their shoe right now, you can't even wash it. You run away. You hold your nose. You go and buy kata. You go to a drugstore. He was just saying that I did the washing of feet in those days was reserved for the least of servants. It was a menial job that servants do. So because there was no boat and Uber and cars at the time, and donkeys were so expensive, people usually trek, people walk. So by the time somebody comes to your house, you must have a servant that does who is at your gate washing people's feet. And it was your lowest, the freshest servant. So a servant, the servant that serves you at the table and all of that. See here, he was saying that me, I'm the I created the whole world. And when God, when Jesus was washing their feet, they were not born again. He said, Me, that's what I did. Me, me that I gave you the exchange. And you have become like this. Uh, exchange. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody is your ex. Every day, new life. Everybody is your ex. Mm? <laughs> new life. No. He said that you also ought to. Ought to. Ought to know. As yet as saying. Eh? 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 One another's feet. Even my feet, they say you should watch. If it is literal, how much more your food? We are not even saying wash people's feet. We are saying serve them. We are saying that share your food with them. Share your money with them. Share your time with them. Share your knowledge with them. Share your life with them. That is how you watch. We are feet washers. Say, I am a feet washer. I'm a servant of God. Hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Yes. That's how you use the ethnic life. It's a life of service. It's a life of service. We are kings and priests and we are the royal priesthood. That like Jesus. You know, when we read stuff about Jesus like um, in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, uh, who, he who was in the form of God did not take it robbery, think it robbery to be God with God. By word. By word. Oh, one quote here, mask. Let's go. By word. Philippians 2, 8 and 9. But humbled himself and took upon. We are highly sought by you that we are righteous of God. You see, so you are, you see, Jesus' life from A to Z was an example for us. For us to also. So we are kings and priests. We are all that. Yes, but. We put them aside, just like Jesus. And we become all things to all men that we might save some. We serve men. Like we put aside the dignity and the honor. And we focus just like Jesus. And we serve men. Listen, even souls, even souls, God is able to leave 99 and go after them. How much more his sons and his daughters. What an honor and a privilege to be called to serve. If you do nothing for him, you are, if you do nothing for him in the church, you are yet to live the maximum exchange life. Hallelujah. Number, number eight. Be a faithful ambassador. Be a faithful ambassador. That is share the word. The anchor scripture we started with last yesterday, the anchor scripture of our church, the preceding verse, can we start from the preceding verse? We are excited about 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 and everybody in this church, including the joyful noise, can quote it. But the verse before it is instructive. And uh, the verse before it says now, say now. 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 We are ambassadors for Christ. You read this in other translations. As though God was pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We embrace the ministry of reconciliation. Beloved, it is after this that he said, so now, so see, see this one. Then, or see, now then, look at the next verse. Four. What does it mean? The English, where is Juju? Is Juju here? She's not here. You know the Bible, a So for for as a saying, salvation, can you save us? Do you know where it's coming from? From our Oshi Assembly's roof, straight to this place. And I was there with him. That's where we are all coming from. From the roof. Yeah, that's why I was late. <laughs> And then then for the whole church, Charlie did that thing work. I left you. Did it work? It's working now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's clap for salvation. But save us. Four. 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 It means what? <laughs> Is it the roof? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Four. Paulina. Four. Teacher, all the teachers say, give the Lord a wave. <laughs> the teachers, <laughs> no, he's a head teacher. <laughs> you know, they are not masters. The people he is lording over, they are not masters. So he's not a headmaster, he's a head teacher. You are not only teacher, you are head. So when, it, when, when, a, st- when a sentence starts with four, you cannot start the sentence, a full sentence with four. Anamibwa. Mimiko school of village B. Eh? Apostle Fred school. Thick school. <laughs> But there they taught me that four. You find start this sentence. It means that this is part of the previous sentence, right? F- because he made him who you know sin to be uh, to be. So you see, it means that we can bring the verse 20 after this one. Eh? Because we have become the righteous of God, we should employ men also 
to come and become righteous, that they should also be reconciled, that they will also receive. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah, it's simple English. Don't pretend like you don't know. What's it, brother? Four, we must be faithful ambassadors. This exchange is a life full of joy. The climax of it all is experience when we lead souls back to him and they also experience the exchange. It is, it is impossible to live as a soul winner and not be a happy person in life. It is impossible. No, it's not possible. Exchange the guitar. It's not possible. What did I say, Junior? What was I saying? We are ambassadors for Christ. As though he was pleading through us, we employ men to be reconciled to him. Then now he said that for why? The reason we must do this is because we have become the writing of God and we are not permitted. We are not licensed. We are not allowed to keep it to ourselves. We must go and spread it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Finally, we cannot be carnally minded. Number nine, eh? Don't be carnally minded. You see, you are God's enemy. You have become his son. But there's a way you can live and you can be living as his enemy, although you are his son. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 6 to 7. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Beloved, you can be a Christian. You can have the life of God in you. You can be a righteous man. And you can be... <laughs> you can be at logger. It's not loggerhead, so it's not a cow. It's enemy. And can I, you know what carnality is? Eh? If you don't know what carnality is, go and listen to Where's someone? Did I explain that? Yes, no time. Time is against me. My time is up. So, let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3 to help me. For then you were, for then you were raised with Christ. I've never been raised with Christ. He was raised for our justification. He was crucified and buried for our sins. But he was raised to make us righteous, to justify us before God. Hallelujah. So seek the things which are above, where Christ is, sitting on the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. Don't be carnally minded. Not on things on this earth. For, verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. As a nobody can kill you. Eh? Nobody can take your life. Don't believe that lie. Anybody who wants to take your life don't know what they are doing. But you must have this. You must reckon this. You must legislate this. You must have it in your consciousness. You must take account of it. You must estimate it. So that when they say that they want to take your life, you say, you cannot take my life. In the name of Jesus. For my life is hidden with Christ. And Christ is in God. Your life is too persecuted. That's why he said nobody can snatch you out. Because they have to snatch Jesus. When they snatch you, they have snatched Jesus from God. Do you see that? When I'm here, subset, nay, under said, nay, subset, nada, they will. What does it If they have, for them to snatch you, they have to snatch. When they snatch you, they have snatched you. Where are you? They have snatched Christ and they are taking Christ. Hallelujah. Beloved, carnality is not only and it's not only sensuality. Eh? It's not only men's problem. It's being overly, be, being overly concerned about the things of this world. Being too mathematical. And budget, 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 and be, and be sincere, 
and being geographical and being philological. This is listening to your senses. Be be, you see, go back to Romans. Go back to the verse before the Romans. To be the life that you have received in the righteousness, Lord. To is your your mind is a valve that the life of God flows through into your flesh. Your mind, which is part of your soul, is a valve that can be turned on and off for the life of God to flow through. Don't joke with your mind. That's what Paul says. Renew the mind. In Christ, we are not trained to speak our mind. Some people, they speak their mind. But I might come out of the No, no, no. In Christ, we bring our mind as subjection. Would they be able to be an if you're there behind, they be an hour. I'm sorry. They be I'm every day. Okay, I'm sorry. Sixteen times. In Christ, <laughs> we are not trained to speak our mind. We speak the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> because the carnal mind is empty to God. The previous verse, the previous verse says that to be carnally minded. Give me the view. For to become a man that is dead, but to be spiritual man that is what? Life and peace. But to be spiritually minded, spiritual mind as you thinking about things above, like Colossians helped us. Thinking about who you are, who God has made you, what you have, the riches of his glory, where you are going. Thinking about souls, thinking about evangelism, thinking about the work of God, thinking about God, your souls, disciples. Those things one day, Jesus told Peter that in Matthew chapter 16, he said, get ye behind me. You are not mindful of the things of God. That is why he said to be carnally minded is dead because you are big. It's empty to God because you have become God's enemy. Who is Satan? No man and woman is your enemy. The real enemy is Satan. And you become God's enemy. You become satanic. And demonic when you don't think about the work of God. Give me that verse when Jesus told Peter, or say, You are not mindful of what the things of God, the work of God. He's not saying we shouldn't think about our problems, we shouldn't plan our lives, we shouldn't eat. But you see, your, your life moves in the direction of your predominant thought. Your life moves in the direction of your predominant thought. And you are a spiritual person. So your predominant thought should be spiritual things. And he turned and said, Satan, get you behind me, Satan. That the day I tell you that will you still be a, a member of a church? Or say, for you are an offense to me. You are an enemy to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God. But your mind is full. Watch there. Your mind is full. Your mind is full of the things of this of men. Your problems. Your mind is full of your problems. But your mind is not full of my things. Living the exchange life, is that's why he changed that mind and gave you the mind of Christ. The logos, the thinking pattern, the understanding process of Christ. I so say your mind is full of the things of man. Pizza, watch it, watch it. Even in church, when you are preaching, you are thinking about what you, even right now, you are thinking about what you are going to eat. You are thinking about, because of the time, you are thinking about tomorrow, your sleep, we are preaching now. But your mind is that we, we, yeah, check. And what do mean that term? And to watch now, because you are late. Even in the presence of the preaching of such a hot exchange message, your mind is full about your flesh and what you are going to eat. Say, hey. hey. That's what he's talking about. Say, when you do that, um, you are the righteous of God. You are, offen you are, you are, an, off you are an offensive righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are an offense to me. He said, you are not offense to your enemies, but to me. To be spiritually minded. Finally, be thankful. 
Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. How to live a time the extinct life is a life that is full of time. Now, every day, now, every time, now, that is the will of God concerning you. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, thanks be to God. Who always, not sometimes, lead us in triumph in Christ. And through us diffuses, the evangelism has come there again. At times, ah. But be thankful that he triumphed and gave you the triumph. Be thankful for the nature. Be thankful for the exchange. Be thankful that what you can do for yourself, what your pastor can do for you, what your hometown and your mother, your father, what men cannot do for you, he did for you on the cross. And it is eternal. And the gift and the callings of God are irrevocable or without repentance. It is eternal. Be thankful. And your thanksgiving must be eternal. We are eternally grateful. Stand on your feet and just begin to bless the name of the Lord for this great exchange. Say, Lord, I thank you for taking my place on the cross and giving me your place. I am grateful. Help me to live this exchange life in the name of Jesus with your eye closed, with your hands lifted, one hand on your heart and one heart in the one hand in the air as a sign of surrender unto him in this exchange week. It's a simple prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. Nine instructions, nine command, nine instructions and nine commandments from the Lord on how not only to enjoy the exchange, but how to live it out in the name of Jesus. He took away your sin and gave you his righteousness. He, he was rejected for you to be accepted. That is a sight him. But he sent you to go and tell men also to do the same. He sent you to be spiritually minded. Say, Lord, help me to live this life. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight. Help me to die to the flesh. Help me to stay alive unto you. Help me to be grateful. And Lord, I'm grateful. Right now, you are grateful. Tell him and receive from him right now grace to live this life. In the name of Jesus, receive from him right now grace to walk this walk. In the name of Jesus, every one of this instruction, you want to ask that he will help you to walk by them. In the name of Jesus, to take up your cross and to follow him. You know that confession and confession is important, but you hardly do it. Say, Lord, help me to say who I am. Help me to profess what I have become and what, who I am in you. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. May I not become my own enemy. Help me to die daily in the name of Jesus. La bruda katahada ba asha. La shulololo po oshahaya. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, beloved. It's a very important moment in your life and in this church. Tonight, the Lord is granting you strength. The Lord is granting you grace. The Lord is stirring his ability in you to walk as he wants you. Worthy, worthy of him, worthy of him, worthy of him, fully pleasing him on every side. That the action that has happened on the inside will find expression in your life. That all these blessings and all this grace and all this abundance in your spirit will bless your flesh in the name of Jesus. Of what use is this great exchange if you are not enjoying it? Of what use is this exchange if it only stays in your spirit? But may the Lord help us to beat the body, to beat the body, to renew the mind, to renew the mind, to renew the mind. All the instruction we have received tonight is an instruction to renew the mind and to beat the body and to bring it under subjection so that the glory in our spirit will bless our world the glory in our spirit will bless our marriages. The glory in our spirit will be a blessing to the body of Christ and the local church in the name of Jesus. And so help us. Sometimes it is difficult. Tell him that the, the Christian life is not only difficult, it is impossible. Lord, it's impossible. But with you, all things are possible. With you, all things are possible. Jesus, live through me. Jesus, come and live through me. Come and live through me. Come and live through me, my Lord and my Savior. May this not just be a sermon, 
May it not be something that I only know and believe. May they become my reality. In the name of Jesus, stir in me again the joy of salvation. And may I come alive unto you again. In the name of Jesus. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him for understanding. And if you have any petition, you can just throw it before the Lord right now before we close. Bring that request before the Lord. In the name of Jesus. And so help us, Jesus. And so help us, Jesus. Ajanuakala buada gada duada 